Tyler Kolick from Marquette. Uh, and I think Kolick is going to be a little bit of a like contentious prospect. I think most people will probably agree that he is an NBA prospect, but I think where he goes in said draft, I think will be kind of up for debate. And I think, again, you will have, if you are the kind of uh, higher end of the spectrum with Kolik, I think you'll have your legit arguments. If you're on the lower end, you'll probably also have some legit arguments. So um, Tyler Kolik is a senior guard uh, from Marquette. Um, he is 6'3", 182. He's currently averaging 15 points, 5.9 assists, five rebounds, shooting 55% from the floor, 43.6% from three, 90.3% from the free throw line. That's an effective field goal percentage, 62.8. He's got a 25.1 PER, a box score plus minus of 12.6 um steal percentage of three assist percentage of 34.7 so um i saw kolik last year in person at the big east tournament um and he, he kind of caught my eye where i was like all right maybe i haven't been paying enough attention to kolik because i think you know a lot of the focus was on um omax and then a little bit on oso but like when i watched live it was like oh Kolik is the guy who I think is really making like the engine go and be making an impact. But like, is he a good college player or is he an NBA prospect? And last year, I think he really, really made a leap into NBA prospect because he had a pretty rough first season um, at Marquette where he transferred. He was like super inefficient. Uh, but last year he, you know, up that efficiency a lot and really drove like a lot of what Marquette did. Um, and he had like a really sneaky under the radar productive season um, with like pro level uh, production. So like, just to read you um, going with a very basic like Bart query, um, True shooting percentage of 57, assist percentage of 35 or better, steal percentage of three, and a box score plus minus of eight. These were the players who hit that threshold since 2008. Steph Curry, Ty Lawson, Evan Turner, Tyrese Halliburton, uh, Tyler Kolek, TJ McConnell, Drew Smith, Alex Renfro, and Nick Kalathis. So, like, NBA players, <laughs> like, definitely a spectrum of NBA players, but basically that whole list are pros. So, yeah. <clears throat> like, and, and that's last year. I, I think he's arguably been better this year. Okay. Um, again, still early in the year, like not in non-conference yet. Uh, he, he certainly has, you know, his, his warts and, and whatnot. But like, I think that he has a, a real shot to be an NBA player. And, you know, he looks like the most annoying kind of like frat boy lacrosse bro that you've ever seen. So like it, it's a little awkward, but the dude is good mm -hmm. at basketball. And uh, he maybe had a little bit of like an older archetypical point guard, which, you know, there's not a ton of, but like also he's not a shrimp. So while he's not like a jumbo creator, he's also not, you know, like he might be hovering that border of like where he can kind of make it on his size and, you know, his physical attributes. So wh where are you at with Kolik? Uh, th there's so many things that you said that I wanted to jump in <laughs> and laugh about. Um, but the first thing is if you have a six, three lacrosse bro, bro approaching you at a frat party, just, you know, avoid him. Um, <laughs> those guys. <laughs> Those guys are strong. And if probably gonna give you a wedgie. <laughs> yeah, dude. If he's 6'3, just walk away. Avoid <laughs> that. You know, you don't want that smoke. Okay. 6'3 <laughs> lacrosse, bro. Um <laughs> is the first thing I wanted to say. But um, no, Corey, I, I think it's hilarious that you mentioned like TJ McConnell, Nick Calathis. Um, I, I thought of guys like Peyton Pritchard. You know, what do they have in common? Right. But also like even a guy like Deuce McBride, you know, like the, mm -hmm. there are these there are these guards in the NBA that look, NBA teams need to fill roster spots and teams need a third, fourth guard. 
Um, the San Antonio Spurs need a point guard. Like there, there, there is, there are availabilities in the NBA where a guy like I think Tyler Kolick could find himself getting employed by an NBA team. Corey, I, I just want to read this off because after his first year, George Mason, he went to Marquette and in his freshman season, he took four three pointers per game and he had 28.1% of them. That's mm -hmm. not good. Not um, great. But ready last year, in his uh, junior season, second season with Marquette, he took a little bit less. He took 3.3 .3 per game, but he shot it at 39.8%. This season, he's taken 3.5 per game and hitting 43.6% and shooting 90% from the free throw line, obviously not on huge volume, but the shooting has clearly improved. Now, when I watch him shoot it from outside, he kind of looks like a lacrosse pro. It looks kind of <laughs> weird, right? It kind of looks like he has a stick in his hand and he's kind of catapulting. I don't know. But it is it it is a little weird to watch sometimes. And obviously, Corey, you can tell us way more about that. But the biggest thing for me, Corey, and I think it's still freaking hilarious that you brought up the whole lacrosse thing, is because he's tough. Like when you watch yeah. Cole play, there's a toughness that he plays with that's really interesting. One of the first things that I wrote in my notes after watching his games, number one, he has his best games against the stiffest competition, right? Whether it was Texas or Illinois or whoever, those when he plays against those teams, he has his best games. And the second thing is for a 6'3 guard, this guy can freaking scream the hell out of people. Like he sets some solid ass screens and you're like, this is really, really nice. And it's not something that you're really looking for from your 6'3 point guard, but he does things on the floor that are impactful and weird for a guy his size but it's because he's tough as hell um he's a real like you know classic gamer right or like the old baseball scouts like uh you know this guy you know ugly girlfriend you know blah 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 he he's he's a guy that scouts will love or old time scouts would love because he's gritty he's a gamer he plays hard he makes winning plays and he gets up for the big games right classically Derek Jeter has been overrated. I'm a Yankee fan. I've loved him my whole life, but I know the truth. Derek Jeter was overrated as a baseball player, but why do we have such a nostalgic high view of who Derek Jeter was as a baseball player? It was because he shined the brightest on the biggest Big stages. And, and I think Tyler Kolick might be that type of player where I'm not saying he's a superstar, but with what he's been given from a physical aspect and with his skill set and with how hard he works, he shines the brightest on the the biggest stages and i think that means something yeah that i agree with you 100 percent. like he is not afraid um he is the one who knocks you know like uh my, the article of my colic title or the article title of my colic article um is tyler colic is a motherfucker great look at that perfect <laughs> because that's what he is and like you know, if you've been around basketball, like, you know, you're talking to a, a scout. If they say, oh, the kid's a motherfucker. It's a good thing. Good thing. You know, it means he's got a little bit of shit to him. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, now you can be too much of one. And that would be like Draymond Green right now, who is suspended indefinitely. Mm -hmm. But if you can hone in your motherfuckerness to appropriate levels, then it is a major asset because you know you're you're just always going to play with that chip on your shoulder that edge that is going to allow you to always think that like you belong and you can you know not only that you belong but like you are going to win whatever situation that you're in and that's you know kind of what he brings so um you know i i think that you, you touched on you know the shooting improvement um, you know, it's kind of weird. Like that first season at George Mason, his volume was crazy. Um, like, and Almost it's like, yeah. and, and it, it's, it went down consistently. Then it's back up a little bit this year. Like his volume isn't where you want it to be necessarily. Um, you, you want it to be, maybe he's at like eight threes per hundred. I think he's at like 6.6. Um, but he's not like a non shooting threat, obviously. And like, obviously he's a good shooter with good touch 90% from the line on like five attempts a game. That, so that's real, um, back to back 40 plus percent shooting seasons with where he's at right now. I mean, he's 50, 40, 90 right now. So like that being in that club, like you're a good shooter, yeah. but really this is what he needs to do. And he just needs to punish when teams go under on shots. 
you know, he because he is such a downhill player and he's a lefty. So, you know, he has that funky lefty game to him. But as long as he can do this where he is burying unders, then he will be fine because it's going to allow him to at least get downhill in most situations. You know, and we'll talk about how, why I think he's kind of an underrated athlete. Um, because he's not a traditional athlete, like mm. an athlete, certainly, but I think he's underrated <clears throat> because of how he uses it. But this is what he needs to do and just prove that he can punish unders and then show that like he has NBA length, uh, NBA range, you know, right here, little logo shot. Let's go. Clocks winding down against Texas. Um buries it. High arcing ball. ball splash. Mm-hmm. But this is what is going to allow him to get downhill. And when he's downhill, he's so tough because he has been an excellent finisher this year. Um, and he's an excellent playmaker. So the combination of his ability to finish at the rim and then also collapse the defense, make plays for his teammates, this is what opens it all up for him. Corey, he's, I, I, lo- I like the way that you put it. And that's why you are a wordsmith, right? The way, when you're talking about him getting downhill... He's he is that type of player, man. He's I mean, the way that synergy is grading him out as a finisher at the rim. All I'm seeing is excellent, very good, excellent. Right. This is a guy that, you know, synergy. They like him as a as a finisher at the rim and he's freaking good. And like I, the thing that I like about him is he's good at, you know, the what is that called? The what, tree knocker? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely not tree knocker. Um, he's good at you know attacking the bigs by putting up big floaters, and push shots. <laughs> finishing amongst the trees. <laughs> but no, what is it called? Oh, it's there's a saying for it, right? When they're good against big guys. Anyway, um, Kolek's that guy. And once again, Corey, at, he's not the traditional athlete, right? He's not super quick. He's not going to jump really high. I think his vertical, if they test it at the combine, he might have the lowest one. Who knows, right? But yeah. the thing with Kolek that I like is he has such a pace to him, man, that he mm-hmm. plays with. He's never sped up. You put him in the pick and roll, he's going to put you in jail a ton. That hostage dribble is great. He's a really good lob thrower, which I think is all connected, right? I think he's a good lob thrower, good floater guy good push shot guy good touch around the rim i think all of those are kind of connected like he's just he's got really nice touch as a passer and shooter and you see it man once he starts getting downhill finish with both hands he can you know a little head fake he'll put your shoulder into you he had some nice finishes on guys like dylan mitchell like bigger dudes athletic dudes he's like i'm not worried about you i'm gonna go straight into you and you're not gonna do (laughs) shit because i'm tough as nails i'm not afraid of you i have you know, and he's got the savvy once again, right? The pace, the savvy, the wherewithal, all that stuff. So I'm right there with you, man. I think Kolik is a really interesting downhill guy, but the real thing is like the more he like utilizes that outside shooting as a weapon for him, the more dangerous he's going to be getting downhill. And already he's such a threat because of his playmaking and passing. This is a guy that loves himself a jump pass into the weak side corner. He loves yep. himself a nice little wrap around to the big man at the dunker spot. So uh, I'm with you, man. Really, really savvy player. Yeah. And you know, with his finishing, um, in the half court, he's 62.8%, right? And you're like, all right, well, he is a guy who, like you said, he's pretty ground bound. He doesn't have like typical blow by burst, but you said he plays with great pace, right? And that's what he does. But he's also like he's physical, and that's that motherfuckerness. Like he he gets into the body, bumps Dylan Mitchell, who's having an underrated season this year. Yes. Um, yes. bumps him off his spot to create that that little extra amount of space for him to use that extension and finish. Like he's not afraid to get into um, the body of guys and finish through contact. And he's also not afraid to attack those bigger athletes. Um, You know, we saw uh, Dylan Mitchell, who was a, a much bigger, more athletic player than him here. He's going to attack KJ Adams who, you know, is a very good switch defender. He has no problem. Again, he's getting downhill to his left, but if there's one thing we know, you just can't get a, keep a lefty from getting downhill to his left. Like these guys just get to their spots. Right. And you know, this is not like a, a one-off over, um, 
KJ either. You know, this is he was able to uh, finish over KJ on multiple possessions. And KJ's big, he's strong um, right now. Got him on an island. Let me take him. Okay. And then he also has that touch. Mm -hmm. Really good with the extension. And then he has the touch. Um, so you look at that and you're like, all right, a couple of good athletes. How about we have him finishing over the biggest player in college basketball a couple mm -hmm. of times? Yes, yes. <laughs> right? Here we go. Zach Eady. Come here, little boy. Look at that. That is yeah. beautiful, soft mm -hmm. touch, man. That is just great touch. Um, over it's Zach Eady. Phased. No, not phased at all. Um, and we know that because that was not the last time he went and attacked Edie, right? Here, into his body with the finish. Going right into the seven foot four behemoth center, um, who was just like statistically one of the most impactful college players ever, <laughs> you know, and, and is just a real presence around that rim at the college level. And Kolek's not afraid to go into his body and just, you know, finish through it. It's going to be the name of the game for him. Like, just tough, fearless. Look at TJ McConnell, man. The career that he's had in the NBA. Very similar. Um, obviously, I'm not saying it's a one-for-one. One. Don't Please don't quote me saying that. But, um, no, I mean, you need these guys, man. You need guards coming off the bench or maybe even starting for you, right, that are unafraid, that can shoot from outside, that can create off the dribble, that, you know, can can be – gamers for you mm -hmm. why did i drag that a so long i don't know but you need guys like tyler kolik in the nba and so whether it's kolik or Oway, i think it's really interesting that you paired these guys together today for us to talk about Corey, because i think both of them are maybe not your conventional ooh, but a first round grade on that guy type of guys but i think both guys will get called uh their names will be called on draft night and it's because they offer value with clear skill sets that translate to the nba level yeah, a hundred percent. Um, and one, one last thing I want to point out on, on this particular clip that Kolek does a lot that I love, and it's going to happen right here as he comes off the screen. He uses this like push ahead dribble. And this mm. is part of what makes him like such a functional athlete. One, he attacks like with really good pace when he comes off the HOs and he comes off screens. Like he is willing to like have a little bit of momentum behind him while he's attacking, but just that little push ahead and, add the screen in and now like his defender is completely on his heels. Right. And he does that all the time, whether it's to make plays for his teammates or for him to get downhill, but he's just so good at utilizing that extra little crafty, um, you know, uh, heady play that, that will give him an, an advantage. Um, now in the comments, Mr. Ray says is Kolek this year's Brandon, uh, Pajemski, the guy who people publications won't catch on to until a month before the draft. You know, I think that there's similarities with pods in the ways in which that Kolek scores. You know, pods is measured out what I assume is going to be a little bit bigger than Kolek, and I think that matters a little bit. And I think that pods is also a more willing shooter, but I, I do think that there are some similarities. Yeah, yeah, definitely think that's fair. Um, and pods was like an advanced stats, you know, monster, and now he's been you know, one of the Warriors yep. <laughs> players. This year, so. <laughs> Tough season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, look, shout out to, to AirPods, that dude rocks, oh. but yeah, probably a little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <of a> <laughs> season. If that's the case. Uh, uh, Corey, if I can really quickly, going back to your point about him, like with that little, you know, hit away dribble or whatever, like it's a game of inches, right? We've heard that forever. And for a guy like Kolek who doesn't have conven conventional elite athleticism, him creating advantages here and there goes a long way. And so I'm right. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, man. There's a headiness, a savviness to his game that, you know, creates advantageous, you know, situations for him. And I think that's a fun player. Like you need guys like that on the team. So a hundred percent. Playing a, a little clip that'll give you a little uh, <laughs> bit of a look into give us a spoiler into my my uh, article, which is I have a little film breakdown comparing Kolik and Goran Dragic, Miami Good. Heat era, a little bit. 
Um, I think that there are a lot of similarities in, in the style in which they play and Marquette playing, you know, basically an NBA offense and Kolik having Oso Iguodaro as a, this, you know, kind of DHO hub, Drogic having Bam as the screener DHO hub. Uh, I think the way that they push their pace, the way that when they get up the floor, even if it's not transition, they're jogging the ball up the floor. They're, they're making the defense play up to their speed. They're dictating the tempo. So I think there's a lot of ways in which they're similar. And like, I think you probably think of Drogic as like a better shooter than he was throughout his career. Like if you go and look at his numbers, like he wasn't as good a shooter as I would have thought. Um, now I think that Drogic, he's a little longer. I think he's probably a little bigger maybe, mm. but I think that they play a similar style. Um, you know, right here, nice little pocket pass to Oso Iguodaro when he rejects the screen. And, you know, we have, uh, you know, similar pass uh, with Drogic into uh, Bam for a pocket pass too. Like these are guys who, who know how to get to those elbows and then make a decision uh, and playing with smart bigs who can then read, you know, where the rotations are coming from. So, you know, just a little teaser into one of the directions that, you know, my piece goes into, but uh, I think that Kolik is a guy that who could have that kind of career where he's bouncing between bench player and starter, depending, you know, on the team and the situation. I'm still recovering from seeing Kevin Knox in a Knicks jersey, but uh, <laughs> but, but uh, I, no, Corey, I, I think that's a really interesting comp. I can't wait for your piece to come out because I, I love when you do those comp um, articles where it's like your whole article, not your whole article, but like a big chunk of it. Those are yeah. always interesting and makes a lot of sense for what we're trying to do. So um, I can't wait to, to read it. But, um, you know, Dragic was a guy that, you know, it's a huge contributor to a team that made the NBA Finals. Like, that's awesome. That's a really valuable NBA player. Played on a lot of winning teams. Played on a lot of big-time moments. Yeah. yeah that's a motherfucker to him. Yeah. yeah. Great comp, dude. I, I can't wait to read it. Yeah. But, you know, anyway, good, just sticking with Kolek, like, this dude is a great passer. You know, when he gets downhill, he is a walking paint touch. And when he does, like, he will make the reads that he needs to make. You know, we see him on this clip doing a great job um using that empty ball screen beats the switch kicks it out to the shooter in the corner marquette's loaded with shooters um so again like it's a great context to watch a guy like this when projecting him to the nba because this is how he would kind of play uses that little jump pass right the, has the the advantage of, of being a lefty again like just uses all of that stuff to his advantage and one of the things that i think he does really really well um in in playing with those different speeds but he is such a good decelerator so mm -hmm. even when he gets you know sped up he's able to kind of use those last steps to slow down just a little bit he collapses the defense entirely here right bona comes and helps and then he's able to just make that laser pass uh again to one of his shooters in the corner and he's able to do that with finishes. He's able to do it with, you know, passes. That deceleration, I think, is such an important skill um, for guys like him to use. And, and he's got that in his bag. Yeah. No, man. He, he's got some Brem Brembo breaks to him. Uh, and this clip reminds me that I've dropped a Dembona a ton on my board, too. I just think fine. Yeah. You know, Bismack Biombo ish. But um I, I, I I'm with you, dude. There's a slow down thing to him that I really love. And um just once again, Corey, this is all like pace and savvy and all that stuff that's so freaking fun. And like this is weird. No, this isn't weird. This is just junky sicko type of stuff that you have to really love basketball to get into. In my opinion, Corey, I really think you have to love basketball, like really love basketball to get into a type this type of guy like really watching the nuance and the beauty to his game that it doesn't come out, you know, on a traditional stat sheet all the time, but um, mm -hmm. I'm with you, man. He, he's, he's awesome. Yeah, he is. Um, you know, he's a lot of fun. Like, I, you know, he plays with a little bit of flair too. Um, you know, we'll see right here. I think this is a, an awesome yes. pass. And it's bobbled by Chase Ross. 
you know, um, somebody who, again, I, I think is uh, going to be an NBA player himself, but I, I love this, the, the little push ahead. And then mm-hmm. mm. that's, that's that Chris Paul reverse spin dribble. <laughs> yeah. That's just so sick, dude. It's let's watch it again. Oh, where are you going? Yep. Just right under the defender's nose. Catch like, the you ball, can't bobble. Come on, dog. Come on, Chase. Catch You're better than that. Ball. Yeah. What the hell was that? Yeah, but he's got that flair. Like he can make the improvisational reads. He can make, you know, all of like, you know, the pick and roll reads. Um, you know, like you said, he's great at, at throwing the lob. He's great at, you know, snaking screens, right? And like doing the the slow it down, get you in jail, all that stuff. Like, he's got it all in his bag as a playmaker. Um, right here, right? Whoop. It's awesome. And you know, three free throws at the the rim doesn't get the assist, but like comes off that NBA double stagger. Stagger, yep. Slides into open space. He's just a good basketball player, like straight up. Like he's just good. They were calling that seventy seven, right, at the hoop summit. That double stagger. Uh, yeah, I believe so. But no, great, really great. He's so good at putting them in jail, and like as we started off with, like they're just the strength to him. Like he's gonna pound dribble you to death and use his strength to keep you on his back. Just great stuff. Really great yeah. stuff. Now you know, like I, I defensively, um, <laughs> oh. here's the thing. Like I don't think he's a bad defender necessarily mm-hmm. like one-on-one whatever like i you know we'll yes. show a nice clip of him guarding um Aaron shannon here stays with his man right like he's not like the slightest of foot the fleetest of foot no you know yeah, like he's not he, you know he's he doesn't have again he doesn't have like traditional athleticism um so on the ball i think teams will try to target him. They'll try to get him in switches. They'll challenge him in that way. They'll, you know, quicker guards. will try to see how well he moves laterally. Um, but at the same time, like I do think he competes. I think he's a little bit stronger than you think that he is. So while he doesn't have like a long wingspan to contest, you know, KD gets him on the block, like, you know, just run back on, you know, yeah. the other way. Right. <laughs> um, easy pass. But, yeah. Yeah, but like this is the guy who has had back to back years now with three percent steal percentages. He is like always in the right spot. Um, so like he just has good timing on when to like gamble and, and take advantage of guys who are just like not paying attention. Um, you know, just coming in, sneaking yeah. in like that, right? And then we're off to the races. Like he does you know, little stuff like that, doubling down on the post um, when when the post guy isn't paying attention. Uh, you know, we'll see something similar um, on Hawkins in that Illinois game. You know, he's going to get the game, the ball, um, not necessarily on the post, but uh, more at the elbow area and has no idea what's happening behind him. And Kolek just comes up behind him and, you know, gets himself an easy basket. So, like, right. I think that he has quick hands. I think that he's the fact that he's always in the right spots defensively allows him to generate a lot of steals um, and then start fast breaks. So like, I think he is going to be adequate enough defensively, especially if he has good defenders with him. I don't think he is Alex Caruso. I don't think he's a guy that is going to make your defense better just with his mere presence. But I also don't think he's a guy that is going to kill you on that end because I think he's smart and he can compete. But ultimately that is the swing skill. And if that's the thing, you know, that and the shooting are the two things that I would really worry about. um, If I was going, why wouldn't he make it? Like, if I was asking myself, why wouldn't he make it? It would be like, doesn't shoot threes enough at volume to make defenses really scared. Um, And, you know, defensively, he just didn't have the athletic tools to be able to handle, you know, moments in playoff situations where teams are going to target him. Almost in the same way that, like, Peyton Pritchard has struggled to stay on the floor, right? Like, um, that I just don't think that he can handle the load defensively and and teams pick on him and a team like the Celtics has other options that they can go to where they're not going to give up anything on that end and everything will be a little bit harder just based on the options that they have. So, but not every team has that. So, you know, I, I think that 
ultimately like it's going to be based on his situation like it is with a lot of players like if he goes to a good defensive situation he will be a fine defender if he goes into a train wreck of a team that has no direction he won't really make much of a difference until he finds himself in a better situation but like yeah. good anticipation good positional defender adequate enough size not going to be a guy you switch a ton on but like he'll fight if need be he'll be fine yeah, Corey, I think, uh, you know, we're, you got to kind of throw the same cliches out there when you have a guy who isn't like an elite defender, but competes hard, right? You you call him scrappy <laughs> is what you call him. And that's what Tyler Golick is. He's a scrappy defender. But I I, I agree. In that, but also, Corey, this is, what, this is where my head is at right now. Let's say, you know, we say that his swing skill is the defense and the shooting, right, in terms of volume. I, I still think he's he's a good enough shooter where, uh, you know, he just has to up the volume. So that's not a huge question mark for me. Obviously, on defense, he's not the strongest on-ball defender, but great positionally, right? Really knows no, how to, you know, come and double and help out and do the right things. So, like, even with those question marks, I think he's at least a second-round pick. Like, I think most NBA teams will, even with those question marks in mind, they would have no problem spending a top 60 pick on a player like this because of what he can do as an outside shooter, even if it is on low volume, what he can do as a guy going downhill and being a creator, I think that is valuable enough to spend a top 60 pick on. So um, I, I think he's going to be good. I, I, I'm i not claiming he's going to be a star, but this is that draft, right? We're looking for guys that are going to be good, that are going to contribute to an NBA team and can make a 15-man roster is kind of where we're at. Yeah, I, I think in this draft, currently where I'm at, he's a first rounder for me. Okay. You know, and and that's considering teams with at the end of the draft who maybe are a little bit more willing to take just a player that they think can compete now versus taking a project who they're not really gonna get any value on on their rookie deal when maybe their salary cap is jumping up. I think he could, I think he plays an NBA style, so it's not going to be hard to see what that looks like at the NBA level. Um, it's just going to be about him, you know, finding that rhythm and and getting caught up to the speed of the game as it is with any rookie. But like, I think he has that such a high feel. He's such a high processor. I don't know how long that process will be, and I think he's going to contribute on his rookie deal, uh, yeah. or at least I think there's a good shot at that. So I think it, you know, a team like. He is going to be one of those guys who the teams that have the strong culture who draft like the good players, like they're going to be like, okay, this is a guy you can add to this core and he's going to fit right in. You know, it, the, if the Miami Heat picked him in the 20s, like I would not be shocked. I think he is like a Miami Heat culture guy, right? Like I could also see him playing on the Nuggets. Yeah. You know, in a backup point guard role. Um, you know, I even read an article uh, about. Um, Oso Iguodaro uh, today in which, you know, Shaka Smart had been asking um, Nuggets assistant um, Adelman, Coach Adelman, mm -hmm. like for tips on, you know, how to run, you know, some offensive stuff. And, you know, they were running some Nugget type stuff, you know, based on what he said. So like, I could see that being a potential fit down the line. So I, you know, I, I just think he's a, he's a basketball player. He's not going to be your star. He's not going to be your second option. Probably not going to be your third option. But like, if he's a guy that could be your fifth starter eventually, or could be the guy who comes off of your bench and runs the second unit and you can trust him, he's not going to turn the ball over a ton and he's going to keep the offense humming and you don't necessarily lose a ton. Then I think that's valuable too.